So a pinhole is a small hole in the emulsion that we need to fill. Pinholes will be caused from any number of factors. From dust on your mesh, has, it been, has the screen been sitting around in a dusty environment for a while? Is there hand oil or skin oil on the mesh before you coat it? Was the glass of the exposure unit dirty? Was your film positive dirty? Any of those things can cause pinholes. Pinholes will happen. The only way to prevent them is to find them now and fill them before you start printing. Okay? So the way I like to do that is I'll set the screen here where I can look at the light source of the windows through the screen. I can also do this, but I like it here because then I have one arm free so that with a pencil I can circle the problems. Because once I set it down, I won't be able to see the pinhole anymore but I'll be able to see my pencil, okay? So I've circled two right there that everybody needs to get up close to so that they understand what a pinhole looks like. But then, look at this. One, you can see that the emulsion is simply thinner here than here. It's thinner here than here. That's not because of bad coating. That's because the Velvetone barely got enough light to cure. So that some of the emulsion that was there washed away. It's also vaguely possible that when I developed the screen, I did it too long and with too much water and maybe even with too much pressure. But probably the cause is slightly underexposed. So not quite enough light. Now if I get the light source behind it, this whole area is essentially a million pinholes. The only way to fill all those pinholes in there would be to essentially manually recreate the edges of my lines. So with something like this, get a close up where the light is where you're seeing the window light right behind the screen. If you see that on your screen, I'm probably going to recommend that you simply reclaim the screen and start again. Not for what you're doing today, but later on when, you're, when you really want your projects to be good. That's what I would recommend. If you get this today, print it anyway, because the point is right now is not to get it perfect. The point is to get through the whole process. Does that make sense? Um, now, if I have pinholes like this that are inside the image area, I have to make a decision. Do I want to allow those to exist and to be adding these little dots of noise into the image? Or do I want to fill them? The filling of them, um, you know, you can use lots of different tools to fill them. You can use a brush. If I want to fill those that are inside of the image and are right next to parts of the image that I need to stay open, then doing it with a brush is probably the best option because I can be very precise. Pinholes that are outside of the image and they may be all the way up here, who knows, are best done with a mat board card. Now, we have two small containers of emulsion that live in the, in the fridge in there. These can come out into the main room, that's okay. Uh, when you're done, put it back in the fridge. We never fill it with more than about a half an inch of emulsion because it would go bad otherwise. So a half an inch at a time, clean out the container, put another half inch in. So some of these I can fill just by taking a little corner 
of emulsion like that and carefully avoiding the image area and filling those. Now it might be possible for me, I'm going to go back first and thin that out. When you add emulsion like this to fill the pinholes, you want the emulsion that you add to be just as thin as the emulsion in the rest of the screen. Remember, the thicker the emulsion is, the more light is required to cure it. So when we fill pinholes, we want enough emulsion to fill that hole and block any ink, but no more than that. So that little bit that's necessary and nothing more than that. Now these are in the image and they're more difficult. So if I am using a map board card, I might put a, a quantity right on the screen like that and take tiny little bits at a time and very carefully fill those little spots while also trying to avoid getting any thick ridges of emulsion. Okay? If I have extra, I can just spread it out and that's fine. As long as I'm applying a thin quantity there, it's not going to be a problem. If it's a thick quantity, A, scrape it off before it dries. B, if it dries thick, um, you're going to have to cure it with more light. I'll talk about that in a second. So we're ignoring this area that is a thousand pinholes because to try to fill that manually now, it's technically possible, but it would be a royal pain in the butt, right? Probably more work than just reclaiming the screen, putting fresh emulsion on it, and doing a longer exposure. And by the way, I think the reason this was underexposed is not because 70 light units was too low. It's because this emulsion was too thick. And I, some of the demos that I was doing that I was prepping for the videos and for y'all, um, these ended up a little bit too thick. Either because I was demoing how to scrape off emulsion or because one screen, the, the fabric was too, was too loose and it wouldn't give me good contact with the scoop coater, okay? Now before I cure this emulsion, I need to dry it. We have lots of hair dryers that live around the shop. You see these drop down outlets. Most of those outlets are connected to a hair dryer. Um, so you want to force dry that emulsion with the hair dryer. Now the hair dryer gets hot. Um, you do have to make sure it's plugged in. Here's the outlet. And sometimes you have to hit that red reset button. So it gets hot. This can melt the mesh. So the hair dryer needs to stay 8 to 10 inches away and kind of keep it moving. Once in my life I've seen the mesh melt in like 15 well, now 20 years, oh my God. But that's because somebody had it on full blast and they were just letting it sit right like that. And it melted a hole in the mesh. So keep it moving. And you can kind of see the color change of the emulsion as it dries. Touch it to make sure. It dries very fast with that hair dryer. And at this point, that emulsion that we added still needs to be cured with light. If we don't cure it with light, then it remains water soluble, and the water content in the ink will just dissolve it, and it'll we'll start getting those dots in our prints. So for pinholes, first fill, then dry, and then we're going to cure it with the old exposure unit. So not the new one, not the fancy machine that you use to expose your screen. 
because that has an expensive bulb when we try to minimize how much we use it. Instead, we're going to use that ye crustacean, we call it, that, big, that homemade clamshell. And because you're not doing an exposure of an image, you don't have to worry about good connection or anything like that. You literally just open up the box, lean the lid against the wall, set your screen on the glass, turn the timer to 10 minutes, and walk away. If somebody else is working in there, you can go ahead and close the lid. But if nobody's in there, it's okay to leave the lid open while it's exposing. The only thing that, mat that matters for filling pinholes is that this whole screen gets a nice dose of 10 minutes of light. No film positive, no contact, none of that. Just 10 minutes of good UV light. Besides curing the emulsion that we've added, it's going to further cure all of this emulsion that was already there. And that's a good thing. That will help make this emulsion stand up to the printing process, the abrasion of the squeegee and stuff like that. So we call that the dual cure. And that's important. Every once in a while, you might expose a screen and you don't have a single pinhole. That's rare, but it does happen. But even those screens, it might be a good idea to still give it 10 minutes on the old exposure unit because it's also curing this out here. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna ask you to just follow me in so you see me set this on that light table, okay? So here's the screen that was already on there. I'm gonna take this off. As you come into this dark room, this exposure unit will look like this. So you come to this, you open up the two clamps like that, lift the heavy lid and lean it against the wall. Then you take the screen that you need to expose, set it on there, make sure it's centered. And then this one we do expose via time quite different because it's a different, you can see that the light sources are tubes and not a single light source. So this one we can measure in time. And it has the two arms here, of course, the one in front, the shorter one is for seconds. And the longer one behind with the crooked tip is for minutes. So you just take that larger one, go all the way to 10 minutes. If the switch has already been left alone, the light comes on. And when it reaches zero, the light will come off. And then it will be done. We can take the screen off and get ready to print, and we just lower this lid back down and do the clamps. Okay? Go ahead and stop video.